so we'll uh, we'll look at a demo before we before I start the demo we'll try to figure out uh, what's the actual problem that we're going to solve right so I think I maybe suggested some boundary conditions and so on to you but we'll make it a little more explicit right now so I have a program that I've written which has uh, two different flavors of solvers uh, both of them require both of them require and I add second order and fourth order dissipation. So I am not doing any any of the more modern techniques that uh, add dissipation in a regulated fashion you understand what because we have not covered that material in this class and I am not proposing to cover that material in this course I have just given you enough I have brought you up just up to that point where uh, you should be able to comfortably read the material that is out there the literature that is out there okay and maybe in some other advanced class you are able to get that uh, high resolution schemes and so on. So one of course is FTCS because we have been looking at FT FTCS right through okay. The other is a, a four step uh, Runge Kutta method as it turns out that the time step that I can take is much larger I will start with that because the time step that I can take with it is much larger uh, things move a little faster right so the demo moves a little faster. And just for completion maybe I will do FTCS the things that you have to observe from this is we have looked at uh, linear wave equation we have seen certain behavior especially in the previous demos we have seen certain behavior uh, the one dimensional equation we have already seen is a combination of right it is a combination of these kinds of wave equations uh, we so there are consequences the fact that there are three propagation speeds there are consequences. So I want you to pay attention to this right what are the propagation speeds can you figure out what is moving how is it moving okay. So the actual problem uh, so it is a it is one dimensional flow so it is going to be just a pipe right it has a reservoir at one end and it is open to possibly the atm atmosphere or some other reservoir on the other, other side and we will decide on boundary conditions the power problem that I am going to run is going to be a relatively easy problem. I want to run the demo for a Mach number of 0.5 so the steady state solution will be 0.5 and you will understand as we do the demo as to why I pick 0.5 right and I will let you play around once you get a code working I will let you play around with uh, various other possibilities that you can run is that fine okay. So let me let me start off I, this is this code is written completely in Python that is one of the reasons why I am running Runge Kutta because uh, Python there is a penalty that you pay but anyway and I am using gray spot plot like I did last time the particular flavor that I am going to use for you today is called uh, has a subscript p it does not matter why right. So I uh, will create a solver so I will create a there is a there should be an RK4 okay so there is an RK Runge Kutta four step flow manager so I will create this flow manager and it is going to prompt me for various and sundry things right so how many grid points do we want to run uh, I want to choose something reasonably large okay so I am going to pick like 1001 very simply because most of the times I ask students to do some assignment and they run 5 grid points, 10 grid points, 12 grid points you understand right so 1001 grid points we could make it larger but then it will take too much time 1001 grid points. So if I take the inlet total pressure to be atmospheric pressure for no particular reason and the inlet total temperature to be 300 Kelvin simply in my mind I am thinking reservoir has been sitting there it is in equilibrium with the right atmosphere outside. So 300 is really not the temperature in Chennai but anyway we will live with that we will go with that outlet ambient pressure now, now we have to be careful now we are defining the problem here so outlet ambient pressure I want it to be what I want it to be so that I know the solution right just like we did for Laplace equation it is nice to know the solution so I have already pre-calculated it if you sit down and think about it it is around 84,000 or something 85,000 84,000 so I am going to run for 84,000 is that fine right and this should give me a Mach number around around 0.5 okay 
I have not actually calculated the exact Mach number that the steady state solution should have and we are looking for a steady state solution that is what we decided we are looking for a steady state solution. Uh, I have told you before that ambient temperature is not a relevant parameter why am I prompting for ambient temperature. Ambient temperature changing the ambient temperature does not change the solution right right but this is for the initial condition this is not for a boundary condition. I am asking for the ambient temperature here so that I can set the initial condition because as we had decided my valve is at the left reservoir the P0 end okay. So the inside of the pipe is constant it completely at uh, 84, 84,000 Pascals and 300, 300 Kelvin okay. So that is done so this should start something off yes it does I will quickly just so that your eyes do not get zap by that white intense white I will change it to a more pleasant color okay. So the other scales do not matter these uh, it is a little difficult actually this demo took me a little time to get right simply because of the fonts and so on. So for the people in the video world do not worry about these now I will read out the numbers okay you your the class can most probably see them. I will read out the numbers as they are relevant okay fine I am not it is just not worth trying to make the letters so large that they, they are visible out there okay. So what do we have what I can do now is uh, this uh, solver which I called O for whatever reason has uh, various things uh, built into it. You can see uh, the one that is actually of interest to us is this uh, item called step and what step does what step allows you to do step takes the number of steps that you take and L not lambda it is L is delta T by delta X okay is delta T by delta X it is not sigma okay it is not the CFL it is delta T by delta X. So I want you to remember this I am in this case I am prescribing delta T by delta X okay. So we need to have a discussion as to how come I am not prescribing the CFL how did I decide to pick this delta T by delta X and I seem to have taken 005 delta T by delta X is 005 what is my delta T if my pipe length happens to be 1 meter I have taken 1000 intervals each interval is, is 10 power minus 3 meters which is 1 millimeter and this is basically 5 microseconds. Okay, so I am going to be advancing my solution in 5 microsecond time steps fine is that okay that is what we are planning to do. So what I will do is I will again remember uh, this for loop just to remind you basically says that uh, take uh, do this 100 times what do we want to do 100 times I want to take steps and I will do uh, 10 steps at a time right because it is it's going to trudge along at 5, 5 microseconds or whatever it is I will take 10 steps at a time we will see where this goes okay and we will see what, what happens with this is that fine let me get my graph back up so that it, the graph is clear and if I do an enter and one more enter oh very noisy curve I am not this is not a sanitized simulation in the sense that I have not cleaned it up and all of that kinds of stuff am I making sense. Uh, so you have to figure out what is happening here. So question is what happened actually I should have taken maybe 50 time steps and 50, 50 I should have looped through 50 maybe instead of 100 but it is okay let me may, may, maybe I will run that through again one more time you have seen it once second time you can actually observe. So I want you to observe certain features what you saw okay we will we'll run through that again and instead of doing 100 I will do I will do 50 okay I, I think I confused my FTCS part which I am going to do later with my Rangai Kutta part which I did know. So what, what we are basically what, what you saw was some feature 
travel left to right seem to possibly reflect off I do not know what is happening something coming back and then there is this one solitary step here that is propagating left to right okay. So we will try to do the following we will try to estimate what speeds are these things propagating at and what are these what do we expect what what is it that we expect okay what what are we expecting here. So let me just I will just uh, I will just kill this I do not want to I do not want to run that. So maybe I will just create another O1 equals 1 at flow underscore p dot rk4 I will just quickly create another one. Okay, there we go. Set that up again. One add. That's fine. Done. And this time I am going to be a little more sensible. And instead of doing a uh, hundred, I'll do fifty. Oh. I'll do twenty. Now oh, I'm getting conservative. Yeah, I will do about 20, that is fine, oops, what happened, how did I disconnect the pipe, is this a problems of there you go. At this point, you can most probably hear me think. Fine, there you go. Let us try it one more time. Good show. Okay. So I say for i in range, maybe because I am taking sufficiently large time steps, I will do a hundred and just do o dot step. I will change the I will change that later. So I am taking a hundred time steps. I am taking a hundred time steps. One, two. There you go. It is. It's under, uh, taking one time step as a time, as I indicated, is a pretty painful thing. All those little sharp features that you see are the solution oscillating, and we saw this in the demo for linear wave equation. So one of the problems is it is possible for me to tune it so that I eliminate those sharp peaks whatever right with the control that we have on some parts in fact I could have tuned the parameter I could have hunted around looked for a parameter to find that I will eliminate these uh, okay right but I actually want you to see even even at this crude at this crude stage I, I actually want you to see what is the uh, let me take a hundred more time steps because this step here has not travelled that far this has travelled quite far so in 100 time steps where has this come can you give me an estimate about uh, 185 or something of that sort 180 185 so if I take 100 more time steps I expect it to come to about 360 this step and these three seem to be aligned so that is some feature that is travelling forward this is moving at a slower speed okay this is moving at a slower speed so There it goes again. Now, as I said, the value that is out here, I hope this flickering is not too uncomfortable. The value that is out there, the step, the magnitude of the step, to get you an idea as to what is happening, the magnitude of the step. Yeah, it will stop now, right? So, it is they are propagating at seemingly a constant speed. Right, that propagating at a constant speed. This lower part, the floor here, is eighty-four thousand. That's the right-hand boundary condition. That was our initial condition. This here is one atmosphere, one zero one three two five. So that one zero one three two five from the left-hand side is now propagating towards the right. That's basically what's happening. There's air at one zero one three two five, and that's propagating from left to right. And as that pressure, 
the question is what, what is propagating I said pressure propagates. So along with this so you have this feature that is propagating that is the that is sort of a pressure is sort of a like an acoustic wave if you think about it. So I would expect that this is corresponds to u plus a this corresponds to u plus a is travelling in the right direction and there are two features travelling left to right two travelling left to right what does this other one correspond to most probably corresponds to the characteristic u this speed here is about 44 45 meters per second this reading if i if i stick it here you cannot make out uh, i can i can see on the scale there are numbers on the top that tell me so this reading it could be anywhere but if i stick it in the middle right this is around 44 45 so this distance that it has travelled you have to look at the x coordinate this distance that this has travelled this distance that it has travelled right corresponds to that speed times how much what is the time we are taking 5 microseconds into 200 right which is 1 millisecond am I making sense so the numbers sort of work out the numbers work out so this is basically propagating this this entity here is propagating at this speed okay so this is most probably the contact surface am I making sense is that fine okay that is most probably so the pressure pulse the pressure is gone and the fluid is coming along right the actual molecules that were the actual molecules that were inside the stag inside the uh, stagnation chamber right inside the reservoir the actual material that is inside the reservoir is now travelling through but that is travelling only at 44 meters per second it is travelling at a slower speed is that fine okay so that is coming along this is this is material actual material that was inside the reservoir that is travelling okay all of these are occurring because of the compression wave because there was compression fine okay so you have already seen this what do you expect when this goes to the other end when this when this pressure pulse reaches this end you are going to come to this end and it say and and there is a declaration that it should be a 101325 but it is not it is at 84000 right so the pipe is completely at 101325 the boundary condition there is 84000 that expansion wave is going to start propagating back it is an expansion wave okay that is what we are looking for. So let me get back here now we will run it uh, maybe what should what do you say if I run this 50 times steps ten at a time because I do not want to pain you now okay now we already know where we are going right let me get back there. So we have our picture back yeah so 10 at a time it really moves fast Fifty time, 50 time steps 10 at a time is 500 into 5 microseconds. Now I want you to pay attention to pay attention to this slope what is happening to the slope as it propagates right to left the slope it starts to tip the curve starts to tip right because it is an expansion fan am I, make, am I making sense it is an expansion fan right if you it is an expansion fan so that the, the slope starts to right does it, it does it make sense to you it is and what is the speed you expect it to be propagating at well we will find out okay we will we will run it a little longer and we will find out now remember it is very easy to look at this feature propagating right to left and think that things are happening right to left no the flow itself is still left to right do not forget this 44 whatever 45 meters per second is left to right what I see here is 90 meters per second is left to right right it is 90 meters per second left to right which is why this is propagating to the right faster than the bottom is propagating to the right which is why it starts to tip okay that is why it is starting to tip it is an expansion fan okay they hit an extra enter last time so just to make sure let me get back sorry about that we are likely to cross the this uh, it is not quite a step right this expansion fan is likely to cross this should be a stop sharp step it is not a sharp step right we are likely to cross this do you think anything will happen when they cross each other any predictions you think anything will happen when they cross each other 
do you think this will get a this will get destroyed its magnitude will change the step size will change they correspond to different characteristics remember they seem to correspond this definitely corresponds to a characteristic of its own right okay let us see uh, do that it is propagating some tiny oscillations here and there so this is another 500 time step so we have so far run 1200 time steps there it goes and what happened it is like the water level you know the water level going up or coming down that is it that step did not go away because remember that is physically still the air that was that is from the reservoir that is travelling and it is travelling at its own speed but when the expansion fan came something interesting happened now. Now the speed at which it is going to be travelling is 90 meters per second you expect it to travel faster u has increased expect it to travel faster right the expectation is that it will travel faster okay and from this point onwards it will get a little noisy we cannot really track because of all these characteristics see now what is going to happen is imagine the expansion fan consists of lots of characteristics and each individual characteristic is going to go hit the right hand boundary and bounce off it if your pipe is long enough they may again coalesce into a shock our pipe is not long enough okay right so it is not we are not going to see we are going to see some funny sloshing kind of motion that is what we are going to see right but I want you to the thing that at this point what I want you to pay attention to is propagation speeds how fast is something going left to right how fast is it going right to left okay any feature how is fast is it going left to right how fast is it going right to left okay. the I am constantly rescaling which is why if you had it on a because I wanted to squeeze three graphs in my scales are changing okay that is why there is some peculiar behavior look at this look how fast this thing fellow came back here how come it came back so fast it is travelling at u plus a and u is increasing right it is travelling at u plus a and u is increasing left to right it is travelling at u plus a and u is increasing the magnitude of u is increasing it is travelling at something that is similar to u plus a at least and u is increasing okay. So what do you expect and look at this right this was something like uh, pottering around right at a very slow speed and uh, if you make a calculation you can, if you are keeping track right I, you, I would if you want you can note down the times or whatever it is this time stamps or you can run it yourself right this is at about 500 and 5, 550 millimeters 550 millimeters okay note the propagation time right to left now there we go one more interaction that step sinks the step identity is not lost that is it it did not even make it across to the end of the pipe okay because the return line is at u minus a and if you are going to be coming down once you get down to 150, 170 once you get close as you get closer and closer to the solution as you get closer and closer to the solution the expansion waves coming from the other side are going to take more and more time okay and if you want the steady state if you want the steady state we already have an issue here there is a there is there is seemingly a problem we have we have we have a, a potential problem here right what is what is the issue so if I want the steady state I want basically the right hand boundary condition and the left hand boundary condition to be in equilibrium and uh, there we go so now you have should have a compression wave coming from the other side and watch how fast that travels. that compression wave of course will be it will be right it is not a compression wave it is a series of waves that are reflecting off okay. So we took two two of those 250 two, two, right two 500 time steps to go to one end I will just do this one last time and then maybe we will either choose a larger time step or 
we will either choose a larger number of time steps before visualization or we will we'll, we'll switch okay. So the leading edge is already here, the leading edge of that compression wave is already here and it is already at the right boundary right, it is already at the right boundary and there you go. So now the expansion expansion fan is going to again and here now I am using these terms loosely because you have it actually a mess of characteristics right like characteristics going in two different directions. But uh, just to give you an idea the right hand end is about 165 meters per second the left hand end is about 155 meters per second okay. So it is travelling quite fast please remember left to right it is travelling quite fast left to right this pressure here is about 88,000 right this is a static pressure the total pressure here of course taken the 155 into account will be 101325 this pressure here is still at 84,000 fine and the process that you have seen is what is going to happen is these waves are going to keep travelling back and forth but critically the 84,000 is something is going to travel upstream causing speed up causing the flow to speed up and it is going to keep happening right now it looks like it is going to keep happening till left hand side and right hand side are both 84,000. So we have a pipe that is communicating this 84,000 upstream right that is basically what is happening and the difficulty that we have with this is as you get closer and closer to the solution as you get closer and closer to the solution this communication upstream becomes more and more difficult it becomes slower and slower okay this communication actually gets is that fine okay so this communication I look at this I mean I, I, I we, are, we are running the same same 500 time steps right and it is not even made it I mean running the same 500 time steps it is not even made it. So you can imagine I am running now you understand why I ran the condition mark 0 0.5 right so if I am running 0 0.9 right if I am running transonic speeds we have a problem transonic speeds we have a problem right u minus a is almost 0 low subsonic speeds we have a problem because u is almost 0 okay right there are two situations u plus a is not a bother u plus a is never a bother right so there are two situations where the u minus a characteristic can turn out to be a problem that is transonic flow and if you think about either from your experimental aerodynamics or any other course that you had transonic flow is difficult to compute is difficult to handle is difficult to perform experiments and so on right okay the other extreme low subsonic flow is an issue here okay this class of schemes if you say I want to compute Mach number 0 0.01 we need to do something special fine okay. So what I will do uh, maybe just for the fun of it I will uh, make that 50 I do not know if anybody has been keeping track of the amount of time that we have uh, spent on this but uh, let me see. So of course I am spending 50 time units before I graph right so it is it seems to move relatively better but it is not running any faster really except that I am not wasting time graphing the return uh, as uh, expected is a lot faster in fact it will just go through so I just want to show you where this goes okay this is fine maybe what I will do is <coughs> just for just for the fun of it instead of doing this maybe what I will do is I will run a coarser grid right then we can run to we can we can rush to steady state quickly instead of uh, instead of doing this I will run a coarser grid after this I want you to uh, do you, you have any feeling for how much the, the residue is going to drop or at least the delta Q see right now if you look at this the speeds the speeds range between 174 and 173 right 175 so a little over mark 0.5 it is at about 175 and the pressures range from 84,000 to 84,400 84,500. So you could say to do if you are only looking for two decimal places 
it is converged to two decimal places. If you look at the residue, right, the residue may not be that bad. Is that fine? Maybe instead of trying to drive this to what I would call convergence, right, instead of driving this to what I would call convergence. So there is now, now there is an issue that you have to remember. You have a code, you have an existing code, you have tested it, right, it has been tested. You are running it in the regime, flow regimes for which you have tested, it is well tested, it is a mature code. Then you can look at it and say, oh, for engineering analysis, if I have one part in 1000, it is okay. Am I making sense? But when you are developing the code, when you are actually developing the code, you would like to know that if I give the code, of, uh, you know, de derive it in terms of floats, if I write it in terms of floats, that it will converge to whatever precision, machine precision that you have with floats. And if you give it doubles, it is going to converge to whatever, that is the code converges. You understand? You would like to know while you are, while in the, you are in the development process. When you are making production runs, it is a different story. Once the code is tested, right, it has been verified, somebody has certified that this is the code that, right, it works, then it is a different story as to how you use it, right. But when you are doing the development, so just to emphasize that and not, uh, so you do not get the impression that, hey, this guy is just talking, let me, let me just show you. And so that I do not take too much of your time, I am going to restart this because I do not trust right now. Uh, I import. Oh, I forgot one thing that I should have done, it does not matter. Uh, I should have plotted the uh, convergence, I should have done the convergence plots, it is okay, I will do it for this, right. I mean having done all of that stuff, I have, I have, the, I have those, uh, I have the convergence plot could have been plotted. I will use 101 grid points, okay, so it will be 10 times faster. I will run the same case. 300 Kelvin. I would suggest that different temperatures, they all have an effect. Temperature will affect the speed of sound, they all have an effect, right. So I would, I would suggest that you look at that. Let me just quickly, okay, that is fine. So 101 time steps. 4i in range 100, ten time steps at a time. We'll just see what it does. That's a thousand time steps. Whether that's enough or not, I doubt if it's enough. But this is going to move fast. This is going to move. There you go. Whoa. So it's de it's de it's definitely faster. Maybe ten was too fast. This is going to move fast. But I want you to note in this animation, I want you to note that the waves coming back are slower than the waves go. See, the, that's it. It just goes slow, almost instantaneous. Slow, almost instantaneous. You understand what I'm saying? It's very clear that it's very clear that left to right is okay. So that was a thousand time steps. It is already at 84,000. The pressure is at 84,005. The speeds are at 177. All of these will soon see this is density, in fact, is to 5 digits, it is the same number. It is not changed. So it looks very noisy, but remember the magnitude of that noise is of the order of 10 power minus 7, 10 power minus 6. Is that fine? Okay. So for those of you that cannot see this, all of these read 10275 on this scale because I am not going to add any, I can add more digits, I am not going to add any more digits, it just messes up the display. All of these read 177.47 right, meters and all of these read 84,000 Pascal. So you can say at this point, why, you, why do you persist in running this? But as I said, if you are in development mode, you want to make sure that it actually goes right all the way. So let us push it. see what it does and you can still see there is this propagation back and forth, it gets noisy, some high frequencies seem to appear and disappear, right. It seems a lot worse than it actually is because I am not dynamically rescaling the, I am dynamically rescaling the, right, the y axis. So these wiggles are not really as large. If you were to plot them on the actual scale, these wiggles are not really as large. What do you think will happen now? 
look at the top graph. Now we are at quantization error. We are at the last bit. We have a single bit left. You can only discriminate one bit. Am I making sense? Plus minus epsilon. We are there. We can't. We cannot calculate this. We can't calculate it anymore accurately, right? So if I run, if I run one last, just for the heck of it. If I just run, if I just run one, that's it. Is it nothing? Is this going to sit there flashing? Right? It may not show. It's going to just sit there flashing. You, you are, we, we do not have enough sufficient bits. So now I feel good. Yes, uh, my whether there are better schemes. I need not have added this dissipation the way I have added it. Whatever, right? But the code converge, and if I give it quad precision, the code will converge. Okay. And if I test it over range of temperatures, range of pressures, range of Mach numbers. Then I will turn around and say, hey, in this range, this code works. If you want to use 10 power minus 3, use 10 power minus 3, right? If you want at 10 power minus 3, you have a reasonable solution. So let us let us just look at, uh, let me let me import, let me just plot the, let me just plot that uh, uh, error. I will create another grace plot plotting and I will quickly excuse the color, I will quickly change that. I think I had something called demo, is not it, last time which will fix that, okay. So it is not relatively pleasant colors. G dot plot and I have just for your, just to remind you, I have something called error, okay. I have something called error, I am going to plot that G dot plot O dot error as usual before you look at it you should try to imagine what I will get well maybe that is not what you expected right. So remember the other thing that I told you uh, let me get this let me get this so that you can see that scale there the other thing that remember that uh, I told you is that the y axis you plot on log scale so we will make this log logarithmic 1 e minus 16 and I will plot every only every 1000 I will show only every 1000 now that looks a lot better okay there are 100, 100 grip points actually if I done if I had actually integrated here I am not integrating I am adding up the I am adding up the residues right. So, but actually what I should do is I should integrate which means that I multiply by 0 0.01. So this is at about 10 power minus 12, 10 power minus 13 that whole curve would have shifted down. You understand what I am saying? The whole curve would have shifted down. So and if I run it longer at this point it will just be flat, right. In fact I stopped it quite early. Normally when I am developing code, I am developing code, I let it continue run. I let it continue to run. Am I making sense? I not only want to see that slope dropping, and look at this. I mean, this is this is really neat, right? You can you can you can see it's a it's a. I would like it to be steeper, right? We'll look at that. We'll talk about that later. I'd like it to be steeper, and as I said, I really wish I'd shown you that thousand and one. Anyway, it doesn't matter. So it is it is it is it is uh, it's rel, rel, it is straight, and then after that, I like to see the horizontal part extending out. Maybe the same amount of I want it extending out right because fluid mechanics is a very funny thing right. I give you an example of a computation that we had done. We had uh, a student of mine was doing 1D flow pre-mixed combustion of hydrogen and oxygen and basically what happened was so you have you have this flame front that is travelling through this mixture right and uh, it is possible that it is possible that or uh, I am, I am, let me let me remember let me get this right yeah so it's possible that uh, you don't have if the hydrogen uses up all the oxygen in its it depends on the mixture ratio right if it's a stoichiometric it's a different story but it's possible that the hydrogen is used up all the oxygen in the neighborhood so you run it the reaction rates are all in picoseconds nanoseconds your fluid mechanics is running in milliseconds right so we take picosecond time steps and we march through and we say oh it is converged 
then we say okay for just for some more time why do not we run it for twice the amount of time and see what happens. And in twice the amount of time what was happening is the species were propagating down right and all of a sudden the hydrogen encounters oxygen again and then again there is a rise. Am I making sense? There is again a, so you cannot just basically say oh, it is all settled down, everything is fine, I have converged to a steady state solution, may not be fact. So you should run it for a little more time to see what 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 is happening, is that fine? Okay, right. So that is as far, are there any questions? Okay, so the things that we take from this right now are uh, the propagation speeds are important, we need to do something therefore for convergence. Okay, we need to do something for convergence as far as these propagation speeds are concerned. The fact that the propagation speeds are disparate is a headache. One way it travels very fast, the other way it is very slow. The faster it travels this way, the slower it is going to travel the other way, right. So we have to get some balance. Ideally, we would like the propagation speeds all to be identical, okay. And so in the next class, I will derive an expression for that. Why do not we just for the fun of it look at FTCS because that is likely where you will start your implementation to see. And uh, the reason why I am doing this is I want to I want to give you confidence okay this is what I am getting this is what he got so at least I am on the right track. As I said this is not a fully I have not sat down and tinkered with this code but it is enough to okay. So I will create a 1D flow and in this case I will use the flow manager the generic flow manager which uses FTCS and not surprisingly or it is not particularly surprising I use this I have the same interface should I do 1001. 2001, 101325, 300 Kelvin, 84,300 is the temperature, quickly change that screen to ONED, that is done, for I in range, what do you want me to run? Hundred, okay. And how often do you want me to show that? Every ten. And maybe I'll take zero point and look at this. Zero zero. That's what I had. Zero zero five light last time. Zero four. Okay. Okay. Let me go back there. See what it does. Now in this case, maybe that 10 was not that great. In this case, uh, for this demo I have deliberately added, the dissipation was added was a little stronger. So you will notice that it does not, it oscillates, it is oscillating very close to that step, it is oscillating but they die out very rapidly, okay. And you will also notice that this looks a lot smoother, right. We will run it for a little more time and you will, you will see that I am not joking. And anyway this, at this rate it is going to take some time. So we will maybe instead of doing 10 time steps at a time, we will we'll make it a little larger, right, okay. Uh, because we do not have that kind of time. How much larger shall I make this? 50 time steps at a time, well 50 may jump but what the heck, we will we'll try it out. Let us try out 50, let us try out 50 to see what it does. That is not too bad. So just like in our uh, earlier wave equation thing, it is clear near the step where the high frequencies are, there is dispersion and there is a problem. But really look at that contact surface, it is not, I mean it is not, it is nowhere near a sharp jump, right. It is really smoothing out. That is because I have added so much artificial dissipation that I have just smeared out the solution, okay. So the key, the key, the key, the key to get a, getting a high resolution solution is determine where to add that dissipation and how much to add the dissipation, right. There has to be a mechanism by which you can do it. The earlier one I told you had an underscore P, right. Uh, one way by people do it is you detect the pressure, there is a pressure switch, there is a switch. You detect the pressure and you say, hey, the gradient of the pressure, the pressure is varying very rapidly here and most probably in the vicinity of a shock. And you add large dissipation there and most probably in the way, right, you understand, you add second order, not large dissipation, you add, add the appropriate dissipation there. I have added just arbitrarily as I told you 
right, but you add the appropriate dissipation there and you can actually get a reasonably sharp shock, is that fine. But you will notice that here it is smoother, there are some fine wiggles, right, but those artifacts are also because the line thickness is very large, so when you cannot, right, even my curves, even my graphics cannot catch. So the graphics basically here will show, so these artifacts are not real, the wiggles that you see there are not real, okay. The compression wave is going to reflect off, expansion, expansion seems reasonably sharp, you can see it rotating now, it is going through the rotation process. This is smooth, right? This is this is like there are really no wiggles. As I said, on the on the ramp, these wiggles are because uh, it's drawing made up of horizontal lines which have a certain thickness. That's the only reason why it's there. This is really smooth. You want me to take larger time steps still? Maybe we have time. I'll do one in a hundred. One in a hundred may be large, you know. That way, that's going to take ten thousand time steps. You guys shouldn't just let me. There it goes and it is like the ocean level rises and falls, so it just the step just comes down, the step survives, the step is smearing because of dissipation, the extra viscosity that I have added, it is my fault and then the reflected fan, the reflected fan they do get steeper but it is not long enough for the for, the, for it to coalesce, it reflects off the wall, is that supposed to be 10,000 time steps? Right, because remember the individual time steps are extremely small. Okay, it turns out the reason why I took Range Kutta is Range Kutta will allow me to take a CFL that is close to 2.8, right. It allows me to go to a CFL that is quite large, and that is the reason why I do not remember if I did an up arrow. Yeah, I do not, I, I do not, I, all, all I want you to see is that yes. FTCS behaves the same way, so it doesn't have to do with the scheme. The return wave is slower than right the uh, forward wave. The contact surface travels at the speed at which the fluid is moving. Uh, if you add too much dissipation, the contact surface is not going to be a contact surface. It's going to be a contact something region, right? So it's not contact. If you think about it, very often you think of contact, you think of something that's sharp. So it's sort of a smeared overlap region kind of a thing. So you have to be a bit careful. Right, so even if you use uh, what you detect, where you detect, right, so there have to be, there are, as I said, uh, please remember, there are a whole host of schemes. I will stop this here. Is that, is that okay? Okay, then we will just talk after this. There are a whole host of schemes that are uh, high resolution schemes. Let me, if you want, let me just show you the, let me just show you the uh, convergence plot for this and see if it looks any different, FTCS. Okay, so from Grace plot. I import grace plot again. G. I create the plot. I will get rid of that glare from your eyes. There is something that I have started doing in my sequence that I have started doing in my sleep now. So then you have uh, O dot error plot. Oops. Can't auto scale, no sets, no active sets. What happened? Oh, I am not, I am not accumulating error here. Okay, fine. My mistake. I, I am not, I am not, I, have, I, I didn't keep track of the error and I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't update the error here. Anyway, you can try it out. Uh, the behavior is, the behavior is essentially the same, right? I don't think we have enough time for us, for me to run the thousand and one for the other one too. The behavior is essentially the same. Uh, the things that I want you to take away from this for this course, right, that we need to do something about disparate speeds, the propagation speeds are different and that is a problem, especially at transonic speeds and low subsonic speeds, okay. So we are going to, I will suggest on Monday something to do so that convergence is faster, right. At low subsonic speeds you can even get uh, wrong answers, you can even get wrong answers because your, uh, your problem is it is said to be ill-conditioned, right such problems where you have very disparate rates. You may have seen in your differential equations course, they are called stiff problems, it is very ill-conditioned, right. 
So if you take a system in which, which is what everybody is now uh, hollering about, if you take a system in which it takes a million years for uh, uh, trees to collapse, uh, be cr crushed and form coal or form oil and it takes you a few days to take that oil out and burn it. Then this dif differential equation is very stiff if you are trying to do an energy balance. One is in the time, time scale is in million years and the other is in time scale of days, right. And if you do it in days that million years will take forever. And if you try to capture the million years, the days you do not capture at all. So there is a problem, these are stiff problems, okay. So we will look at, uh, we will look at some way by which we can fix the stiff problem. The other thing is here I have taken, here I have taken delta t by delta x fixed. I want you to think about that. One day I will tell you that which means that at each point the CFL was different because the propagation speeds are different. Delta T by delta C, right. So, what does it mean to keep CFL fixed? Fine. So, in the next class, we will look at these issues. Is that fine? Okay. Thank you.